Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R360 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on processors, but in the video series as a whole, we're going to cover processors, memory, hard drives, solid state drives, network cards, power supplies, how to rack your server, how to upgrade your iDRAC, and a ton more. So click that like, smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R360 server. As I mentioned, in this video, we're going to cover CPUs. So let's just go ahead and hop into all the good stuff. So what we're going to do as a whole, we're going to talk about the compatible types of processors. Then we're going to break it down and show you the CPUs that we recommend because people ask us that all the time. And we break it into three categories. And then we're going to show you how to remove an old processor and install a new one. So yeah, there's going to be a lot going in. So let's get into all the good stuff. First things first, let's go over the general specs. There's one CPU socket inside. It's it's an LGA1700. This means it's going to use Intel Xeon E2400 series or the new Intel Xeon 6300 series. So both are going to be compatible with this as well as the Pentium G700 or the G700T. Not really something that most people are going to be using. Most people are going to want to honestly probably put in the newer 6300 series, but it is also compatible with the E2400 series. So again, it's compatible with both. People ask us all the time, hey, what CPUs do you recommend? And as I said, we break it down into three categories. We have our low end, our value, and our high end. And really, it's kind of self-explanatory. Our low end is just going to be the uh, lesser specs. That's going to be very, very budget friendly. Our value is also budget friendly. It's going to be more expensive than the low end, but it's not going to break the bank. And it's going to be kind of a nice little sweet spot where you still get some good specs overall, but it's not the most expensive procs. And then the high end is, well, exactly like I said, it's going to be the uh, highest end procs, the most expensive stuff, the ones that we recommend if there is a deal between some of the higher end ones or just basically the max specs as a whole. So let's go ahead and hop into those three. All right, so let's start with the low end. So we kind of just weeded out the Pentium as a whole because most people really aren't going to find that relevant. If I wanted to go really, really low end, we could throw in some two core uh, Pentium procs, but realistically, we started to try to uh, hit the four cores or the quad cores to start, and then the six cores for the value, and then some of the eight cores, which is going to be the higher end specs or the max spec, because eight is the highest amount of cores that you can get, at least as of today. Wouldn't be surprised if some CPU is invented by Intel in the future. That is maybe, let's just call it the uh, the 6400 series, I don't know, where they come out with something and that now works and it has a you know, 12 core, 16 core, because essentially these are supposed to be the competing Intel processor to the AMD Ryzen, and the AMD Ryzen does have 16 core procs right now. So it wouldn't surprise me if Intel's you know cooking up something in the lab right now, trying to figure something out. Do I know that? Nope, I'm just speculating, but would you know stand to reason that they would want to have something to be able to compete with the Ryzen. So, but as of today, eight core is the max. All right, now that we've gone over the general specs, hey, what's compatible? What do we recommend? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go show you how to remove the old processor and then we're going to show you how to install a new one. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear because you always want to be safe before you're actually handling the parts. So I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on. So we're safe to handle our parts and work in our machine. So I always like to lay out everything we're going to need. So first thing obviously is going to be the CPU. We're going to need the uh, Phillips head screwdriver, and yes, it is a Phillips head. It's not going to be any special T bit, but a Phillips head screwdriver to remove your heat sink. We're going to need a clean rag to be able to clean the bottom of our heat sink as well as I'm going to clean the CPU because there is some resale value to it. And then we're going to need some thermal paste to be able to put on to our brand new CPU. So that's everything we're going to need. So first things first, make, make sure your latch is set to unlock. Pop the latch and lift the top just like any server you've been in before. Hey, this is Mason with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to show you how to properly remove an old processor and install a new one into your Dell PowerEdge R360. First thing we want to do is go ahead and remove this air baffle. Pretty simple. All you have to do is just lift it up, being gentle as possible, and just setting that to the side. Now, as you can see, we have our heatsink right here, and we have the dim slots on the side as well. All these four, and we'll talk about that later, we have these four screws right here, 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 and here. So you're going to go ahead and grab your Phillips head screwdriver. Remember, it's not a T20 bit of any kind, it's a Phillips head. And you're going to go ahead and start unscrewing these heat sinks. 
Now, typically when we have bulk orders, we'll opt for the electric screwdriver, but for this situation with just the server, we're gonna go ahead and use the manual one because I like to personally use the manual ones uh, just so that way we don't strip any of the screws and have a hard time replacing the heat sink. So it's a pretty good idea to keep a manual screwdriver on hand so you can go ahead and do this carefully as possible. And as you can see, we're trying to lift all these screws up all at the same time, doing an X across them to adjust to be safe. And as you're unscrewing this heat sink from the motherboard, you should be able to just feel that heat sink coming off the motherboard pretty easily. Um, it's not gonna be too hard to do, it's pretty simple. All right, now all I gotta do is just lift straight up and you've removed the heat sink. So now we're looking inside and as you see that old thermal paste on that heat sink, as you can see, we have our CPU over here and this is the lever that's gonna go ahead and let the CPU come off the socket. So all you have to do is press down over here and you're gonna go ahead and push it to the side and that will release the latch that's holding this uh, outside bracket around the CPU and you just lift over this other lever and it should easily come off of the processor and then all you have to do is just lift straight up and there you go, you've successfully removed the old processor from your Dell PowerEdge R360. And as you can see, we have all this old thermal paste on our processor, so we're gonna go ahead and grab our clean rag and just start cleaning up all this old thermal paste. Now we like to do this on the side of the server so none of that old thermal paste flakes off and gets into the motherboard or the socket with all the pins in it, uh, just to save us time and not have any damages to the motherboard because that could result into a replacement of the motherboard and that's just a big headache that no one wants. So just make sure you're cleaning this old thermal paste to the side of the server and you should be good. All right, just giving that last little bit off of the CPU and there you have it. You have this old processor cleaned up and we're gonna go ahead and set that into the CPU tray on the side. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the old thermal paste off the heat sink. Same thing, cleaning it off on the side of the server as to not let any of it flake off or get into the motherboard or those pins in the socket like we were talking about earlier. Just being really careful, making sure we get all that old thermal paste off the heat sink. All right, so now we have that heat sink cleaned and there's no old thermal paste on it, so it's good to use for our new processor. So now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to install a new processor into your Dell PowerEdge R360. So we're back in our server here. We have our ESD gear on, like we said before, and now we got this open socket and it's ready to take in a new processor. So I have this new processor right here. We're gonna go ahead and follow this triangle located right here on the motherboard and it's going to line up with the triangle that's on the processor right here. As you can see, we're gonna go ahead and circle it just a bit so that way you can see it a little bit better, but this triangle's right there. All right, simply just set that processor into place, setting it down. Once it's safely in that socket, we're gonna go ahead and put this bracket down, and then we're gonna secure it with this lever on the side over here, and we're simply just going to move it back into this little hook that it was in, and there you go. Now the processor is safely secured into the socket. Next, you're gonna grab your new tube of thermal paste, go ahead and uncap it, and we're gonna start putting thermal paste on our processor. Now, this is going to start a war in the comment section, uh, specifically about uh, using too much thermal paste on the uh, processor, because you don't wanna to use too much, or else you'll you know, have it leak out and get into the motherboard or those dim slots on the side over there and it would just be a really big mess to clean up and you'll probably have to replace the motherboard or even the CPU socket and no one really wants to deal with that. So just make sure you're using the perfect amount and finding that balance of thermal paste so that way it can evenly disperse onto the top of that CPU. Now that we have our thermal paste on our CPU, we can go ahead and now reattach the heat sink to the motherboard on top of the CPU. So as you can see, you're probably wondering where do I pr uh, place this heat sink on the motherboard. This indented side is going to be lining up with this other triangle that's on the motherboard. And as you can see, the screws will simply fit in the place when you find that indention and the triangle on the motherboard. And all you have left to do is go ahead and screw that heat sink back onto the motherboard. And there you go, you've done it. You've installed a new processor into your Dell PowerEdge R360. Hey, do us a favor, leave a like and smash the subscribe. 
And if you're looking for any custom built Dell, HPE, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, Gigabyte, AMD, we do it all. We have both new and refurbished. So please give us a call or leave us an email at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, thanks for stopping by guys. Thank you.